Yeah, white people would be like, uh, like uh, they'd Forget be like it. English bulldogs. We wouldn't be able to breathe. We'd be like, going, <laughs> 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 I guess we do that anyway with sleep apnea. I used to have a joke about, uh, this is back when I used to try to be edgy, about... Um, there was an era where you were like, I'm going to fucking edge it up. I used to want to, I used to think edgy, we're rolling by the way. I used to think edgy was the, my angle, like as edgy as you could go. So like I would take big swings, like real, especially on the road where it didn't count. This is, mind you, this is before cell phones. This is before vlogs or blogs. So you could, really, <laughs> you'd you be could, so cooked. You could, I would be fucking destroyed. If people have video of the shit, I would say one of the jokes I had, which I don't mind saying, cause I think it's, it used to get a laugh from black people. I go, um, I'm all about stereotypes. I'm about brand new stereotypes that no one knows about yet. Like finding one that isn't out yet. Like I go, you want to hear brand new stereotype about black people? And I'm I, nervous for you. I, yeah, and I, go, I go, black people. Not, not all, not some of you. All of you. All of you. And I go, and I would always point to a black person and go, tell me if I'm wrong. Black people have the ability to fall asleep anywhere. And it's so fucking true. Black guys can no fall asleep way. On, on planes. You get on a plane, it looks like a Stephen King novel. Black people are asleep before takeoff. Black people are very <laughs> relaxed. They can fall asleep like on a butt. You ever been on a subway in New York and brothers are sound asleep at two in the morning? Just all of a sudden the train stops. They're like, that's my stop. I like up. that your edgy humor was about like the, <laughs> the specifics of black culture. <laughs> it was like, oh, uh, another thing about black people. But, they love shopping. But the, no, but the presence, the, the premise was the flip side was mm. that white people have a hard time going to sleep which is true in my family exclusively like we all all my white people i know have sleep apnea they have a maybe it's just like karmically the past is just like ghosts of white people's colonization keep you awake this is why i wanted because i do you. sleep easier than my wife who's white wait what are you you're like, I'm half Pakistani, half Swiss. You didn't know this? Just no, I knew, I knew that. I knew that, but I couldn't. You I, did know this? I, yeah, yeah. I think I talked to you about that in Vegas. Yeah, we had such yeah. a fun time in Vegas. That's back when you could say to someone like, "Hey, what are you?" <laughs> it was like a year ago. <laughs> I know things have changed in a fucking year. I think you can say, "What are you?" Look, I'm here to say everybody can be chiller than we think we can be. I know that there is like this hysteria in the comedy community of like, "What?" I mean, "What?" Are, uh, everybody's coming after us, and it's like, no, but we are just people that are constantly critical. Const. Our job is to to come up with angles and yeah. to and to uh, fish out of water things. And now there's like every dum dum has a platform to do the same, and it's like fine. You know, some yeah. person online, I mean, I shouldn't even talk about this because it like stokes the crazy, uh, you know, Yeah. but some person online like wrote me that I was erasing bisexuality because in my Netflix uh, 15 minutes that I, I, my favorite part of the thing is when I say, can anyone here say that they're a hundred percent straight? And this is in Atlanta and nobody claps. And it's like this amazing moment where I'm talking about sexual fluidity and it feels like, oh my God, this resonated. And and someone's take on that was that I was like erasing bisexuality, which I just like, I can't even wrap my mind around how that works, but it's like, fine. I mean, cool. That's your tweet. You know, that's yeah. your take. So it's not that I can't say that. It's just that no matter what you say, someone's going to have it, a take on your take and it's going to be much more visible than it was in the past. Yeah. I'm obsessed with, um, I'm obsessed with the, like I started following this woman because of the Montreal uh, shakedown with uh, Southern Mama. Did oh my you God, I was there. I was in Montreal. So okay. I was. Okay, okay. let's take this okay. real okay. slow. Okay. Okay. I want you to pretend like you're making love to me. And, uh, I want you, and, and, and we're both on ecstasy <laughs> and we don't have to go anywhere tomorrow. Uh, pass the water. <laughs> All right, I'm grinding, grinding these jaws, <laughs> bopping around. I love how much you, I can tell oh, that you love gossip as much I as I love gossip. gossip. I mean, who doesn't love gossip? I mean, this is the other thing about racial generalizations. There's just some things that, I mean, the sleeping thing, that's different, but like. <laughs> Edgy Burt could be like, you know what Asians love? Gossip. You wouldn't think about it. Yeah. It's like everybody's yeah. horny for secrets. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So I was in the pool the afternoon of the Vanity Fair. So every, just to set it up for the crowd. I mean, your crowd is like comedy they, people, I, right? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. But, 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 but still, I, I kind of covered it, but I didn't know. I literally just was like, I basically watched Amanda Seals on my, on Instagram. That's it. Okay. So what happened was. Vanity Fair puts out this like 10 comics to watch list. Uh, they announce it at Just for Laughs and then everybody that's on the list is on a panel in the afternoon and then performs at a show at night. At the panel, I went swimming with Joel Kim Booster who is one of the comics and he's like, oh my God, there's this like internet dude 
he's like we like google imaged him he's like this he's got like flat ironed long hair he's like i just like (laughs) whatever i don't want to make any judgments just his name is darren knight and he was one of the comics and he does this character called southern mama and backstage dulce sloan very funny comic and like a uh, very strong woman does not have time for your shit. I've known Dulce for a while. I love Dulce. Yes. So that guy's manager goes up to Dulce and is like, um, you, you know, how many followers do you have? And she's like, no, nah, I don't have time for you. And he's like, but seriously, like you should be making internet content. She's like, I'm on TV. I don't need, I don't, I like don't want to talk to you. And which is just like, don't you wish you could be that rude? <laughs> you know, uh, just like I shut conversations that. down. Yeah. I'm just like so Canadian and being like, well, content, tell me more. Oh, I'm, I'm, I just talked to my therapist about this. I think the reason I love my wife is because she's indifferent about me. Like anyone hmm. who is indifferent about my me. My wife or- is also sort of like, like if we ever talked about like opening up our marriage, she's like, oh, whatever. And I'm yeah. like, no, no. <laughs> oh. Yeah. yeah I'm the same way. But like the part of that is just the confidence that, of knowing that I wouldn't run away. Oh my God. Maybe we married the same type of person. We should go on a double date sometime. I would love that. I've already thought about having you guys over to have your kid in the pool. Oh my God. I would yeah. love to put Wolfie in the pool. Oh, okay. So, so Dulce has no time. Uh, then flat ironed Darren White. I just don't know why I'm like stuck on the flat iron, but just like picture flat ironing your hair. I used to, it's so hot and it's just so hot already in the summer that like for a man who hasn't been pressured to do so, to just be like, let it dee, let it da, but then also be like, I'm Southern, I'm straight and I don't want, so th- his thing was his whole thing at just for laughs on, at the panel first, I'll finish the Dulce thing. He goes up to her and he's like, you shouldn't be rude just cause you're on TV. And she's like, what why are you talking to me and on the panel both on the panel in the afternoon and at night at the show he's like talking about how comedy there's no place in comedy for talking about race for talking about sexuality comedy is about jokes and that's how they do it in the south and just this like you know in the panel apparently he was just like had this like bravado like he was like the number one comic does he not bomb 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 at his showcase to the point where the industry is booing. Wow. I talked to Alonzo Bowden about it. Who's been to like every just for laughs since forever. Yeah. And he's like, this Back is when it was just this, French. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he was just doing physical comedy. So he was like, that's like the worst bomb I've ever heard of in <laughs> the history of the festival statement. that when the industry is booing you. And then he like threw all the other comics under the bus by being like, you know, I don't, co- there's no place in comedy again for race and, and talking about being gay. And it's like, Honey, there is something way deeper going on inside of you, and I promise you the other comics on this on this show are not the issue. And Chris Red, who is an amazing, sweet, generous, very, very sweet, nice sweet, person. sweetie, 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 yeah. he, <laughs> I mean, the fact that Chris Red was mad at this guy, like, there's a video that Amanda Seals posted of Chris Red being like, "What? Just because you bombed, you want to take this whole like this is a special show for these comics, and you want to act like you're you you're the god of comedy while you're bombing." Good God. Anyways, um, <laughs> internet internet comedy and stand up comedy not a great mix. No, it's not the same thing, and, and not to not to take away from people who are doing very well. Like uh, yeah, like, one uh, person like, doesn't dictate the whole thing. Yeah. But like, what's the girl's name? Uh, Amanda sings. Um, Miranda. That, Miranda sings. Yeah. Miranda sings has huge shows. Yeah, it doesn't her mean fans she, love everyone her. that does internet yeah. things is a nightmare. But I think we but are. I'll, in I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Amanda sings, and I and I'm I don't mean any disrespect for. Her. But Amanda Sings could not you still go. Still are not saying her name. Is it is it Miranda? I Sings? think it's Miranda. It's Miranda Sings. You're right. Okay. I'm sorry. Miranda Sings could not go up at the store and follow Bill Burr and do very well. Not like you By and way, me. I can't. I can't. Not I like can. you and me, baby. Yeah. But oh, I yeah. do okay. Suck it, Bill Burr. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I say Bill? Burr? I take Bill on None the road. <laughs> I'm fucking such an idiot. It's like an arbitrary, like Miranda could not pilot oh. a ship. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's a very different thing. And it's, and it's, and likewise for us, for us, it's very hard to do internet comedy. Like, I don't it's know. It's just different things. It's, it's different, different things. And yeah. And there's, I guess something to like the isolation of creating something on your own and then putting it out there and having this amazing, huge, positive response gives you that like oh. start it from the bottom. Now I'm here sort of, uh, ego. And certainly I think we've both been doing stand up for a very long time. Ego is like, 
Definitely it, good comedy. It's an interesting thing because it's like you need a certain amount of like. Con- Here's the thing. I think when co- you see it with with comics that are starting out, if you lead with your ego, if what you understand about comedy is like, if I go up there and I act like I'm fucking the best, then like it doesn't matter what I say. And it's like, well, it actually does. You see them, you know, like leaning on the mic stand and uh, just like playmates. talking. Slow. When play- whenever playmates did comedy, yeah, like or hot chicks. Hot chicks would do comedy that were like the funny girl in their circle. Yeah, and they would be like, uh, so I went roller skating, and it was like all comedy confidence up there but they didn't know how to structure any jokes and then the exact opposite is someone like i'm trying to think of i wish i could say a name without sounding disrespectful go but, for it but someone like um dan natterman who maybe it, when he started didn't have all the stage presence in the world yeah but he had great jokes yeah and he he needs to find a little bit of that swagger and i think he has yes but but those people like that are really confident i remember there was this one guy all right, this is one of my favorite moments in comedy. I, this happened 20 years ago. There was this guy who was fucking yoked from like Staten Island. Flat ironed hair? And he goes, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, short, uh, muscles, barbed wire tattoo, like fucking sleeveless shirt. And his 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 whole act was like this. Your, your, mama, your mama will probably like look at me and go... This is a bad boy, but I'm not a bad boy. I'm a good guy, you know? I like that. And it was all about how, how what a great guy he was. What a great, great guy he was. I'm so and, good. I'm yeah. so nice. I love everybody. I love everybody. I got I got friends from across the spectrum. That's the thing, is you look at me and you think one thing. And then someone goes, uh, I remember him, I remember someone going, do you live in Chelsea? And he just goes, no, spicks and faggots live in Chelsea. And then he just goes it's back so to his wild. character. And I'm like, it's oh my so God. wild. You, this facade you put up yeah. just disappeared in an yeah. instant. I mean, it happens like now with men speaking on the Me Too movement on stage, you can see it often. I don't want to name any names, but it's like there's a lot of dudes doing material of like, he, I get it, you know, and everyone has to touch on things that are socially relevant so that you're like, I'm here, I'm here in society, I'm yeah. with you, I'm connected. But like, you see them like have this take of like, yeah, but you know, it's uh, guys just stop, you know, stop being such monsters. And then later in their act, you, right. it's like they don't see, but they're like, yeah, when I was fucking this bitch and then I don't call her and I'm just smack her. I mean, that's not, this is like obviously not word for, I'm, I'm trying to not convey the person's act. <laughs> yes exactly it's, I'm, it's very I'm sidestepping but it's it's interesting how here's the thing in comedy i think the most important thing is a, it, it takes you out of the experience when you realize that a comic is not self-aware which is yeah. why you know we can fall into the trap of like someone shakes their keys or something and we're like we want to comment on it yeah we want we want to show that we're there with the whole like bravado of it though my favorite that so I started in Toronto and then I moved to New York and then like had to like restart re- do open mics and stuff. And my favorite character at the open mic was the dude who is like, like aware, <laughs> aware in the wrong way of why a joke didn't work. Like he'd be like, you know, I, I went to Starbucks, ordered a coffee. Right. And uh, the lady gave me the wrong drink. So I was like, suck my dick. No one laughs. And he's like, Oh, Guess no one drink no one drinks coffee here. <laughs> it's like coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, babe. Oh, that's my that's, oh, that's, that's, <laughs> that's exactly my, what's wrong. That's, <laughs> oh, if none of you oh drink gosh, coffee. I want, I want that to be a bit. I want <laughs> that to be a bit. <laughs> I was signing up for health insurance the other day. Yeah. And this guy was like <laughs> was like, uh, oh hello, how are you doing? I go, like, Hey, fuck you. Becky, huh? Yeah. Uh, no one gets insurance here? <laughs> Well, what? Yeah, you're gonna regret that when you break something. Yeah. Oh, that's so funny. Oh, uh, th- so wait, when you when you, I have so much I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about the. I want to talk to you about inclusivity. I want to talk about to you about the phrase "stay in your lane." I want to talk about uh, the Me Too thing. I want to talk about Nanette. Cool. I want, but I, all awesome. I want, but what I also want to talk about is how you got here because I, I I follow your Instagram stories. You seem so very happy. There's two people who I genuinely. When you have a story come up that I, I get, that I get, I smile like randomly. Aww. It's you and Fortune Feimster. Fortune oh, yeah. Feimster. She's living her best has, life. She's living her best life. Yeah. I saw her the other day at an airport and I just went up and hugged her. I was like, I, you make me so happy. 
Like, and I, and she was like, really? Like, didn't even see it. And I was like, are you serious? I like, mean, this soundbite should be part of the It Gets Better movement is that Burt Kreischer's favorite stories oh. of happiness are two lesbian stories. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, would, I would say, I would say this, it, it, like, uh, five years ago, yeah. I would say, I, I would say, I don't really see stuff like that. Like, meaning I don't, like, I don't, I don't look at someone's sexuality first. I don't look at someone's color first. I don't look at, yeah. I can't say that now just because I don't know if I do or I don't. And and you get called well, everything on stuff so shapes quickly. A person. Yeah. Like, to me, it's like interesting to, it's interesting to talk to you because you're like, uh, daddy, straight, white, cis, dude. Yeah. Like, it, you bring a different perspective. I loved hanging out with you in Vegas. And to say that, like, I don't recognize the things that make you you is like, well, that's not. Yeah, I guess. I think it's like, it's a, it, it's fun to be, I mean, going back to the, if we were rolling when you were talking about Hitler wanting pure breeds <laughs> yeah. and how many surgeries your dog had. Yeah. I think that we all get richer from connecting with, like, different voices obviously i right? think so but i but i feel like there is this major um movement of stay in your lane like don't like well the stay in your lane is just like don't embarrass yourself i mean if you personally for me like if you're a dude talking about the me too movement then talk about it genuinely don't talk about it as if it's like you know i've been ahead of this shit all along because what's actually happening and i feel i i it, from from watching Shauna be the pregnant one, I've had the experience of being like, like the daddy, you know, like the patriarchy in the matriarchy. Yeah. And there is like something that it's, it's easy to fall into traps of being like kind of a monster about things because you don't know someone else's experience. Like I was like in a lift with Shauna when she was super pregnant and I was like stoned and drunk and like philosophizing. And I actually said to her, I was like, babe, this is the easiest pregnancy ever. You know, like think about it. Our baby's about to pop out in like weeks, right? We, it's here right now. We don't have to change it. We don't have to feed it. Our baby's here, but it's like so easy. And she was like, I want to push you out of this moving car. You are a nightmare. But it's, but that, but. I said that too to my yeah, wife. Yeah. And it's like, but it's only, it's, you only know your experience. Yeah. Like I have a joke in the special about Shauna walking around the house eight months pregnant being like oh, can you believe I'm 150 pounds and I'm like bitch that's my goal weight that's been my goal weight <laughs> what does it feel like just flying drifting down a hill but you we only know our experiences and and I, I think it's important to speak from your experience and not to because I think the most interesting part to me about the me too movement from a male perspective is probably like what it feels like to to be to be vulnerable in this way to be like well i have to think about things in a different way you know and and rather than feel panicked about it and be like you know every bitch is after me yeah just really like mind that and mind what got us there and mind like from your experience rather than you know doing the prototypical male thing of like i got it i got this this is the that's way you know because male inter, that's such a male and it's instinct. a me thing and when i say male too you know that i'm like so queer and i mean i'm i have very male qualities like i am de like if you like watched my relationship i'm very much like the kevin james and the king of queens and my <laughs> wife is leia remini like gays are basic too but like you know i think that vulnerability and authenticity is it's obvious that those things are actually what uh to me that's what i connect with when i'm watching people on stage when yeah. i'm watching you tell a story on stage it's like connecting with what you actually feel like rather than um watching someone reach for like the definition and the, this is the way it goes you know I've, I've had a hard time watching a lot of stand-up because i feel like so many people are taking this like uh social approach to it like let me explain this to you and i and i part of me goes i, I would rather hear your experience in that like yes. how how it, it in, interacted with you so what what is like like from from a from i think you have a unique perspective because i think you see both sides of the fence fairly clearly where i, I think i might see one side of the fence really good like someone was talking about toxic masculinity but you're a very compassionate person and connected person I am, but I think that's because I think like someone was talking about toxic masculinity 
And they're like, you have no idea what it's like to be around toxic males. I go, oh, yeah, I do. I'm like, you don't know what it's like to be peed on in the shower when you're in ninth grade yeah. by a I senior think, and know, not be able to stop I it. I think a lot of homophobia came from men who are afraid of being raped, being, uh, you know, at the oh. aim of predators. Yeah. You know, it's the, it's the fear of, like, knowing how dark it can get. Uh, I think that that fueled, I mean, well, actually, oh. when I really think about what fueled homosexual or like the like, no, 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 don't be a homo. Probably we wanted to populate the earth, right? We were naturally attracted in different ways. Not every person is gay. Not every person is straight, but all of us lay somewhere in the gray area. And most of us were corralled into being like really, uh, leaning into the straight, part of ourselves uh because it's like let's populate this shit you know let's build let's get it's like strategically and it is part of you know it's i think there is something intrinsic in being a human that we want to create more humans i mean look at shauna and i we had just only eggs but we found that goddamn sperm didn't we (laughs) didn't we (laughs) didn't we get that baby (laughs) adorable baby by the way do you want to know how we made him yeah did i tell you no Oh my God, Bert! When when we met you in Vegas, Shauna was had just gotten pregnant, and we got pregnant. Um, I took a surf lesson. We were in Mexico. Shauna had terrible food poisoning, and I had the day to myself. So I was like, I'm going to take a lesson. First of all, you need to know, eight years ago, like a year into Shauna and us dating, uh, Shauna and I, I'm just one person. Um, a year into Shauna and I dating, she had a dream about wolves, and she woke up and she was like, "Our baby's name is Wolfie." I was like, okay. I mean, you're cool and have tattoos, so you make all the cool like aesthetic decisions. I'm sure it's weird, but like uh, it'll yeah. be cool. And then I take this lesson, and I'm feeling this way about my instructor. He has the same color skin as me, same like type of hair, beautiful brown eyes, and I'm just like looking at him, and I'm feeling like a similar way as when I met my wife. I'm feeling like this is an important moment yeah and for the first time i've never thought about having a donor or doing it like we were actually like looking into adoption but for the first time i was like this is my baby daddy like this could i really i i felt it i felt and he turns around and he has a tattoo of a wolf on his back and Shut not up. just a tattoo of a wolf. We actually, this was Christmas time. And the Christmas before we were in Palm Springs with friends. And as a joke, they gave us a plate and it had this ex- the exact style and crop of a wolf that is tattooed on his back. And in the corner, it said, mom, it was like, they got it from Goodwill as a joke. They had no idea about the whole like wolfy dream. Wolfies are baby thing. Really? And I, my wife is like a total witch and crystals and like more incense that I would want to have in our house. But, <laughs> but, and I'm, I'm like the skeptical daughter of immigrants, but like, I mean, it just, that just feels pretty, that's, that's, that's serendipity. pretty serendipitous. Yeah. And then the fact that like, so I had this crazy plan in my head. I've just met Ricky. This is our, our, um, baby's genetic dad's name is Ricky. Wait, I, is this the surf instructor? Yeah. The surf wait, instructor. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. So wait, so wait, you get the, see the surf instructor. He has a wolf on his back. Uh, he has a wolf on his back. We drink mezcal because Shauna's like KO'd puking and, yeah. and shitting at the same time. I'm on the roof of our Airbnb drinking mezcal with uh, this amazing angel. His dad is a police chief. His mom is a chemist. She studied in Texas. That's why he knows English. He's just this amazing soul. Yeah. And then we only have a few more days left in Mexico, and this is just kind of a crazy plan in my mind. But Shauna and I, when we're walking on the beach, I kind of pitch it to her, and she's like, you're insane. You're talking about throwing a stranger sperm on me. Like, how easy for you to concoct this plan, but yeah, like, yeah. this is my body. Um, we're, we happen to be walking by the beach where he his like surf tent is, and he happens to be there. They have like a quick exchange. Hi, hi, nice to meet you. Maybe we'll just hang out later. And as we're walking away, Sean is like, you can ask him. So, okay. Which is why, like... So, wait, so wait, so wait, so wait. So, so then... We've never talked about doing this with anyone. So then, so then we have, like, this amazing, like, we, we end up... Um, okay, no. So then I take a second surf lesson, which yeah. wasn't supposed to happen because we were supposed to go deep sea fishing, but the ocean was too rocky. And because Wolfie was, like, thing. making yeah. the ocean too rocky so that we... Oh, uh, so because the Wolfie universe could, is like, oh, yes! bitches, you're staying on shore! So um, we take the second... And, And, oh my God, we are leaving the place like with all these beers that we're going to bring on the boat. Bummer, bummer. We're not going to get on the boat. And 
Ricky walks up past us with a surfboard. He's about to teach a lesson. And I'm like, hey, can I take a lesson after this one? And he's like, yeah, sure. I'm available. And Shauna's like, okay, yeah. I mean, like, I don't know how you're going to ask it or what the, but I go, I take this lesson and in the water, it is a lot like surfing where I'm like waiting for the right moment. And this is a feeling that I had when I met Shauna too, where I just knew that this was like a very important person. And I, it was like the Eminem song where it's like sweaty mom spaghetti. Like you only got one shot. Like this is like, you you just, you know, you got to land the Ollie. So I, I'm waiting for the right wave conversationally and, and, and surf, instructing like it's not like you're both on surfboards he's like holding the board and you're just like looking at each other and I'm looking at him and I go okay I'm gonna ask you something that might be strange and there's no pressure I've never asked anyone this in my life but um you know my wife and I would like to have a baby and uh we were wondering if you wanted to help us do that and he looked at me for a beat and he smiled and he was like that sounds interesting he's like i i think you guys are a beautiful couple and you'd be great parents and if i can help you then i'm totally down and then and he's like, then I like oh my God. no then i like <laughs> caught a wave got to the shore i was like what's happening I like ran to every bodega in Sayulita in Mexico looking for like contraptions. I was like, I need a, I don't mean, what do you, how do you like funnel? I didn't, had no idea how much sperm came out of a dick. Wait, I was wait, like, wait, 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 I literally yeah. thought it was like piping icing. Like in my mind, I, I like got a dish glove and cut just the thumb and then duct taped that and then cut a hole at the end. Cause I thought I'd be like, let it be. And then Shauna <laughs> who slept with many men and Ricky both looked at me and they were like, what do you think is happening here? Oh my God. You walk in yeah. with like, with like every, <laughs> fucking yes <laughs> the strangest contraptions i have a picture of it somewhere i i like emptied uh the tampon out of an applicator i was like or we could use this yeah and like none of this will work but also he's got Shana, an applicator <laughs> yeah i mean well that was i didn't i was not we made I, I feel like we made the baby in the best way for us which was we ended up calculating shauna's ovulations because uh-huh. a woman needs to be ovulating to get pregnant and we went back to mexico a few months later Oh, uh, so it didn't happen then? No. So you guys talked... We just, like, hung out that night and had a great out, night and, drinks. like, prophesied, laid by the ocean and, like, thought about with Wolfie. Ricky, Rick, with with Ricky? Ricky, yeah. Oh, cool. Um, and then went back and had this amazing vacation with him. Uh, and then, yeah, we took the Jizzness trip. and Jizzness trip. <laughs> and we, uh, you know, Shauna peed on the thing that said that the smiley face that, we like, you know, Wolfie was ready. And then he came into a sterile cup we put it uh, into uh, he left i put it in a sterile syringe sperm is so resilient it's like terrifying for straight people but know this that sperm can stay alive for five hours in like a warm place so i put it in my arm in the syringe in my armpit shauna and i made love i put it inside of her and you know we made the baby the way the lord intended are you that that (laughs) works it first try it worked Oh, is that not incredible? And Shauna's 38. I mean, we were so ready to be like, just like on this journey with him. Yeah. Um, and we still, I mean, now like we're, we are on this epic journey with him. That's, he's like part of our family. I mean, he's very much like he's living his life. He's got this beautiful girlfriend. They're traveling around Mexico. Um, but they're coming to visit us in November. And I think, I mean, like, you know, the intention is that he is, certainly in Wolfie's life as much as he yeah, because, yeah, can or wants to be, but is not a parent. Not a parent, not not day in, day out, but like almost like an uncle. Yeah, like I that, mean, whatever. He's like whatever Papa, Papa wants, Ricky, really, you know? I guess. Yeah, I think it's like, I think it's just, to me, the, I always thought it was going to be so hard to have a baby and there's like the stigma around like the queer ways that you have a baby because I think in the past, like everything that was different was a secret. You know, mm-hmm. oh my God, he's adopted. Oh my God, his dad. Yeah, everything like, was oh a God. secret. And 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 that like the whispering around things is what makes it uncomfortable and and feel jarring and strange. And the reality is, we are all different. And there's no secret about how we made Wolfie. I want to actually like draw a book, like a a book on like you know basically like the story beats of how we found Wolfie, you know, how it's Wolfie so came crazy into our life. that, that, that 
worked because I, I've known people that have had such a hard time getting pregnant doing it the regular way. Yes. That's amazing. I think it's just like as the amazing thing is like as gay people, you always know it's not going to happen some conventional way. So you don't feel entitled to some result. Like we, for, for instance, like for our second child, we'd like to have a second child. There's an option where we have another child with Ricky. If that is in the cards, you know, yeah. there's an option where we adopt. There's an option where maybe we could find, we can find a way to adopt a child from Mexico. And they're all exciting options. And I think that people, I think it actually is counterproductive when you're um, trying to have a baby to envision one like myopically conventional way. I it's, think that you're it right. puts well, stress on the body, it puts stress on the process. And uh, you're right we, because straight people think we're gonna have a kid, and then it's and then it's either that or oh my god, we can't have a kid. What's yeah. next? As opposed to the way you look at it is like well. Almost this. Uh, this is the wrong word to use in this conversation, uh, but only because it's a buzzword and it's it's not a healthy bu- buzzword. I think, but almost Joe? like <laughs> like no like uh, like straight couples feel like it's it is their right, their birthright to have a child. Their it is their privilege. When you're gay, you look at it and you go, "I want to have a kid." Let's. How do we go about that? Like, yeah. Well, obviously, I think obviously, that one we can't- one gift of like going through the process of being queer in any way and I mean queer and like just not what your parents expected or not what like the world would put pressure on <laughs> you to very be very queer yeah exactly no seriously but like you're the gift the gift of being you Bert and being like and being like I'm fucking drinking I'm fucking doing this I'm running yeah. around Russia I'm doing you know I'm living this like crazy life what people yeah. you know not the life that my parents wanted to brag about that, that it's a rite of passage yes because you actually you arrive you start you realize that it's it's like such a fool's gold to go after what people want from you and such real fucking treasure to yeah. to get it your way and and i was thinking the way that, that makes this you happy morning i was like uh, this morning i was thinking um sometimes i get very frustrated with with my job you know like everyone else like with touring with touring and with like all the expectations on it like right now we're looking at we we have like three different deals and three different spectrums of the entertainment business okay Um, amazing congratulations well not entirely because i'm i'm like i'm I don't feel like I don't. Ha- I don't feel like I have the energy for all three. I, I, I'm afraid that all the crit- criticism I, I've given to, like, say, someone like Amy Schumer, who I said took too much stuff at one time, and then she was forced to the thing that I think is her voice is stand up, or I think really actually movies is really her voice. I think she's a really good movie star, but I think that like it for- it forced everything to kind of suffer, and and maybe her stand up, which was her calling card, wasn't her voice anymore, and she ended up closing on street jokes. Mm-hmm. And so I don't ever want my stand up to suffer because I think that is my true calling is stand up. Yeah. And I'm sitting there going like, and then I was like, I have buddies that are going to a, a job that they really don't want to do. And I've had those jobs where you go, this is almost depressing that I'm working at, at Starbucks or I'm working at like at uh, at Barnes and Noble, mm-hmm. and and this is not my dream, and this is not my goal. And this is that is not... one of the deals you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, it was one of the three <laughs> deals. But I started saying, "How did I get here?" Like I'm very lucky to have these opportunities. Yeah. And then I was like, "Stop worrying about it." And then I was like, "Oh, I remember how I got here. I remember having to tell my dad I wasn't going to be a regular person, and that I wanted to be a comedian, and that was hard." And then I and when you said that coming out, like. It's almost like that you have to come out to your out. parents. That is totally a coming out. For not for everyone, I'm sure. Because your parents don't have a framework of seeing how comedy could lead you to to live in this beautiful house with this family and have like a life that they in you know in, in one sense you are actually achieving everything they wanted, yeah. but you're taking a route that's for to them is like being like I'm going to do it by being a crackhead. And 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 then I look at like say Wolfie's path will be very. I think it'll be a lot smoother than say the children that I know now that have uh, gay parents that are of age. So I think that, I think that was... I mean, Wolfie right out of the gate has to be strong and unique in himself because, 
and that's a gift i think you oh, know my I think daughters it's like a total... my daughters have a gay parent in the fact that in a queer parent i say that yeah in the, in the re- frame you use it because they have a parent who takes naked pictures of them puts them on instagram and then promotes his tour dates and all their friends not of see them that. Of, of me of me of oh, okay me. I take <laughs> i'm like oh, that came out wrong someone please don't <laughs> isolate that i take naked pictures of myself <laughs> <laughs> I take naked it's pictures like of my how, daughters. <laughs> it's like the nightmare of what the, the right side of this country thinks queer oh, conversations. I want to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about uh, about um, the guy that just got fired from all his jobs too. By the way, which one is I, that? I don't know the guy. I just saw you post about him today. Oh, which? Uh, oh, Alex, Alex Jones. Jones. Yeah, yeah, I want to hear. What a weird guy. But uh, let's. Yeah. But let's put a pin in that. But my daughters have to have to live with a parent that is living outside the box and doing things differently and his frame of what and he be finds, proud of that and be and not and be, succumb to like because so much of childhood is like i'm normal i'm normal yeah. i'm normal it's like the first you know oxygen chamber that as a human while you're being socialized that you've got to like you know stabilize into is just normalcy i remember when i the the beginning of my comedy career was my my shedding of my shame of being brown of being pakistani because i started stand up months after 9 11 and it was a reaction to me suppressing for so long not talking about my uh muslim pakistani family because i was scared to be judged and i was a tennis teacher at the time and there was this like moment where these kids were picking up balls and this girl said to the I could hear their conversation and this like eight-year-old girl was saying to the boys like my mom told me who did it like who knocked down the towers it was the packies and I'm like I'm here I'm 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 here I'm this Pakistani person that could be a representative of like not a terrorist but I'm too chicken shit I'm like playing like I'm Puerto Rican or something to like avoid being judged and it's so stupid it's counterproductive so the beginning of my career was very much a reaction to that and talking about race and then ironically I had to learn that again when I realized I was gay because I didn't come out on stage I came out on stage last after I told my parents after I told my friends when did you come out when did you know you I were knew gay? I was gay actually I was at the just for last festival when I was 18 and I fell in love with one of the drivers really yeah lowbrow lowbrow love wow Wait, were you, and you were performing <laughs> i was performing at the festival i was doing this thing called the homegrown competition which was like the canadian new faces yeah and um and yeah i fell in love with her we had like an affair and then and then it was like it was like this secret love affair that i had in like in montreal i would jump on a greyhound and no one would know that i was leaving toronto to go to montreal and just like spend the night with her and come back for my classes. I was in college at the time. Um, and I came out to my parents about a year into that when I was 19. And I came out to my friends a little bit like peppered around was it, between was 18 and 19. Was it black and, and white? When you, when you realized, was it black and white? Like uh, guys definitely don't do it for me. Well, like most people, I came out as bisexual because that was the language that I knew. And I had like been pretending to have a crush on Scott Wolf for so long that I didn't, I like didn't think it was pretend. I don't think, I mean, mostly I wanted to be Scott Wolf while he was having sex with Jennifer Love Hewitt on Party of Five. <laughs> but like, I also like, he, you know, his dimples, like this is the thing that I think you've got to like go out to come back in. And I feel like what I've realized is Uh, We put these like black and white these like binary labels on things because we want to understand them Mm -hmm. but really we all just have the capacity to be so many different versions of ourselves to be in love with so many different people Um, and I really do think that it's uh, this is the wrong comparison because depression has like such a negative connotation it's depression is to feel bad but we all know people who identify as depressed yeah. because they're so far in the polar of depression that it's like, I need help like with pills and stuff to like knock myself into a place where I can like socialize. And, um, but just because we, we don't label label ourselves as depressed doesn't mean I don't think anyone can say that they haven't been depressed. It's a really, that's a really, maybe the best analogy I've ever heard because I, I, I would never say I'm depressed. 
I'm a depressed person. But I've been depressed. Of course. And I'm and I have, I have a propensity for depression. Meaning like I know I I've been there, but I haven't been there as bad as some people. Mm-hmm. Like and, and I would never say that. But and, I know what and, you're and, I know you, that. and you may get more or less depressed than your wife for your kids or whatever. Everyone has everyone lays somewhere in the spectrum in terms of their susceptibility to it. And then life happens and different experiences happen that can make you happier or sadder. Um, but I, I think sexuality is very much like that. Yeah. And I think that we're probably, hopefully, um, moving towards a time where kids don't really have to, as they come of age sexually, young people don't have to uh, label themselves anything or be assumed to be anything. You know, that I, you know, I very, very, <laughs> I, I've felt connected sexually to men. I've never had sex with a man because I think I've figured it out, like, pretty soon like when i was in my late teens that what i'm more interested in is just like a warm sweet female body with boobs and all of the parts of a woman like that just feels like real good to me but if drake wanted to kiss me i would i would kiss him and i'd touch his peen and i'd be (laughs) into it i promise (laughs) I, even though he's a new dad and it was controversial, I, I'm like, I feel like it's kismet that we're new dads at the same time. <laughs> we could have like just a n- new dad little smooch and it would be fun and hot and cool. And, you know, when you're young too, I think a lot of, I, it's, I guess it is not, not spoken about, but people experiment and I think it's not like, it's not this like silly, stupid thing. It's this coming of age, figuring it out thing. And it just because you land on one gender doesn't mean that. I mean, I would much rather, honestly, so much rather if you gave me two options of like some basic bitch that was, you know, like the prototype of like what an 80s LA person or someone like Drake or someone um like my friend Jeffrey Self, who's like so funny and cool and cute and gay, actually, if I had to choose who to spend the rest of my life with, even sexually, I would pick Jeffrey over like some basic woman. I had a, it's I had much a, I had a more, gay roommate or lesbian roommate. I don't know why, I, but I had a lesbian. No, roommate. I like saying gay, honestly, because yeah. I feel like lesbian, the word is just like so le- like les, like le- molesty, les librarian. It's like yeah. there's, there's nothing fun in the word. Gay is like gay. I had a gay roommate who's a chick and she said to me and she's no longer uh uh i guess gay i don't know but she's she, no longer with women yeah she said uh it's the person you fall in love with she goes i can't help it i fell in love with this person yeah and for her experience too she probably lays really like um it, within the spectrum she probably lays a lot more in the middle and even yeah. these words like middle and polars and all of that it's like we're so much deeper than the language that we have to discuss these things but like you know she it, and I get that I'm talking about sexuality as someone who is more on the on the gay side, but also like had to had the experience of realizing that I was gay, and now here I am, ta- like tr- trying to tell straight people that they have the uh, sus- a susceptibility or a, or would be likely to be attracted to the same sex, and it's very jarring to them. Well, it's hard for it's hard for us to, I, and I say that as a straight guy, yeah, it's hard for us to wrap our heads around the idea of experimenting. Like I could I could I could not. Phys- mentally wrap my head around an experimentation in the same way that I couldn't imagine and maybe this goes hand in hand but I yeah. couldn't ima- today I was jogging and I thought there was this woman jogging towards me and I was a woman I know and I th- and she's married and I'm yeah. married but she's really attractive and I you know sometimes my brain's broken but my my wife's out of town and what if she <laughs> and, and what if she said hey Oh my God, <laughs> let's, let's finish this jog and then go fuck at your house. I, and I, I literally, I felt myself say, I can't. I, and by the way, this is an, um, I'm a, this is imagining well, this and I went, I can't. I but love I, that even in your fantasy, you're a match. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think it's hard for something for, I'd say most straight guys. Well, that's a good, what you raise is because uh, when it comes to, so here I am being like, you don't have to be gay to get it, just accept it. But when it comes to like polyamory and opening up your marriage, I have a friend that opened up her marriage and was talking to me about it. And she was like, you and Shauna should like, you know, try it, open it up. And for some reason, like 
in my face and my mouth. I was like, that's so cool for you guys. Yeah. But in the back of my mind, I'm like the Westboro Baptist Church around lunch, like, not in my town, faggot. Like, <laughs> you keep your poly eyes off my wifey. Like, so weird. And it's fear. It is the same thing as homophobia. It is this thing where it's like, I know, of course, I would enjoy having sex with lots of different people. Oh, of course, yeah. we're like meant to have different partners I and all of that. I love that. But, I already but know who it is. But it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's the lady that you keep jo- conveniently jogging at the same time as. Um, By the way, she didn't say hi to me. Oh my God. (laughs) You had all these plans. I love how the brain works. Isn't it so cute? (laughs) That's like such a good, cute, confident brain where it's like every person that walks by, it's like, she will offer me sex and I will have to say no. Oh, here we go. Here we go. This is awkward. Okay, (laughs) bye. But I I can relate to um, the aversion to even picture it because you don't want it to destroy kind of like what you have figured out. I just think it's like, uh, from from relating to it in that way, it I, I can accept that it might be great for other people. Personally, I haven't seen it work amazingly for Polyamorous. straight people yeah. or for uh, two women. I have seen it work really well for two for gay men. There's yeah. like a relationship with sex with two men. I don't know what it's like to be a man a man, but I think that with two men, I've I've seen couples that I like love. I love the way they are together. They're solid and they. Uh, have sex with different people I do also think like having sex two people with another person is something that I could wrap my mind around like if Shauna and I were like you know 10 years down the road another person that has no social media presence it's like it's got to be to me it's it's about it's about risk the risk of losing my wife is not worth it. Right. Me and you my know? wife and, would and have to. And even for me, like, I like to connect with people. You know, when I have sex with someone, it's because I have a crush on them. It's because there's I want to, like, spend time with them. And so that's the part. It would have to be, like... <laughs> What I'm saying is like I acknowledge that like kinkiness and like spicing things up. Ugh, kinkiness is such a weird word. Uh, <laughs> kinkiness. Uh, <laughs> um, My wife told me the other day that uh, perverts only meant for men. Perv? She, she goes, perverts for you guys. And there's no female perverts. And I was like, really? And my daughters are like, yeah, dad, perverts. Because I, when I shaved my beard and I had a mustache, my daughters said I look like a pervert. And I go, how do you know what a pervert looks like? And they're like, we're staring at one right now. <laughs> but yeah, I know what you're saying. The the other the other side of that, like if me and my wife, if me and my wife were to have a polyamorous relationship where we invited someone in the room, yeah. it would have to be like, a fucking clown or an elderly person. It would, yeah. it would have to be someone <laughs> that we saw as a project together, almost like a remodel. I like the elderly person because I like also like the strategy of getting in the will. I feel like you. <laughs> it needs to be like a heist. It needs to be like Thomas Crown Affair. Like, like you guys are stealing a painting, you know? It's about like you oh. two accomplishing something rather than like, hey, who's this new person? Like, My you wife know. and I are into threesomes only when there's an objective. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's got to be it's got to be to build your connectedness otherwise it's just it's it's too much of a risk and like I know I got a great deal on my wife in terms of you, you know she's just such a, an amazing you said sexy something, you said person. something on your um, Instagram the other day that uh, that I have said but deleted and I was, and only, was be, only because only because our kids are older yeah but I've had I, you were laying in bed with your wife and you're and I think Wolfie was crawling around and you're like, oh my God, like, like I want to get a picture. And then you're like, oh wait, I can't, you're naked. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I've said that. I've been there. I've been there. So wait, this is, uh, this is in. Oh my I'm God. Not, it was my story. You are watching my stories. Oh, I always watch your stories. Yeah. Thank always you. Do. Yeah, I watch, I it's stopped, fun. I mean, I like I, people that upset me. Yeah. I like hearing opposing viewpoints. That's why I'm interested in Amanda Seals. Because yeah. She yeah. got into a, a rant yesterday about, um, against white women about white women who think they're not racist i'm not really certain and i don't want to put words in her mouth because it's 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 a trigger thing for like alt-right guys but and 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 it's and i think what she was saying was right but it about how white women saying you need to love one another we're all the same and she's like nah bitch we're not all the same we have different cultures we have different backgrounds we have different stories yes there is a thing i think there is a thing where it's like when you're coming from a place of privilege it's very easy to say like here's how we all act in peace and it's like i mean (laughs) we all actually have much different experiences and the 
uh, the black experience is so complicated in yeah. this country and every country. And like, there's two different ways. There's like the MLK way and there's the black Panthers way. And it, I don't, and I think you need both. And I think it's like, so condescending to assume that like suggesting peace to someone is it's so the funny answer. The, when I was, I, there was a period when I would point out our differences on stage and people would call me racist and I was like, no, that's part of the thing is that we're all different. And they're like, yeah. no, we're all the same. And that's what they'd say. Not black people, but white people. Yeah. Would st- and be like, no, we're all the same. That you're a racist. And you're like, no, no, no. We've had very different experiences. So d- and it was refreshing to hear Amanda say that. And I was like, oh, I've been saying this for fucking years. We're all very, everyone's, that's what makes us interesting. And that is where I think inclusion should show up is when you accept someone for their differences. Yeah. F- allow yourself the, the space to listen to somebody. You know, I don't think I do that enough. And, that, and like, just going back to like the non-binariness of life, that we're actually we are all different, and we are all the same, and yeah. there's room for exploration in all of that. What's what? And I don't mean this in like a juicy way. I don't mean this in a sexual way. But what is the? Fir- I know what my first. I can I can describe the first time I had sex with a woman yeah. in a non-sexy way in like a in like a an analogy of like I remember shaking I remember yeah. like when what the first time you have sex with a woman and you're 19 18 mm-hmm. and you're in Montreal you kind of get a crush on someone yeah is it like incredible is, is it but is incredible. is there a fearfulness is there like a no like, because by then i had kind of wrapped my mind around i was like traveling five hours or you know eight hours on a greyhound to like just kiss her so the escalation of going from kissing to like making love was just incredible really yeah it took me a long time to have an orgasm in my life because i had not really masturbated like i'd touch myself like you know normal person style but like or not normal person style i had never explored masturbation i think as as a way of protecting myself from realizing i was not normal you know oh that's really interesting oh my god that's really fucking interesting my little brother in Oh my God, that's fucking fascinating. My little brother in the fraternity. Yeah. Uh, I ran into him in New York. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was a virgin when we were in our fraternity and he claimed he never masturbated and we all said he's a liar. Everyone said, you're a liar, you're a liar. And yeah. I remember him telling me in in 100% honesty, I, I've never masturbated. And I was like, you've got to be fucking lying, right? I go, it's, I mean, you can. It doesn't mean anything. He goes, no, I just haven't. It's not my thing. Yeah. Ran into him in New York and he fucking white faced me. He was like, Bert. I was like, hey, what's up? I'm not going to say his name because I don't, yeah, you yeah, know, but yeah. I was like, what's up? And he was like, I'm gay. And I went, what? And he, I realized there was a Puerto That's Rican sweet. guy's hand in his back pocket. Aww. And I'm like, hey. <laughs> I think he a severed looked, Puerto Rican man's hand. A severed Puerto Rican. I'm gay and I've just murdered someone. <laughs> Gotta go. <laughs> Hold this hand. And he, but he goes. Uh, Hold but, this hand. <laughs> put it in your back pocket. I'll see you in a week. <laughs> he he was. But I think he was afraid that I would have a, an opinion about it one way or the other. But yeah. then, but what you said is being afraid to masturbate. I I have a problem with masturbation because I I know what I like and yeah. I don't mind exploring that and I yeah. don't mind like there are things I don't like I stay away from you know like mm-hmm. and it's by the way it's the most random shit like I can't watch uh, interracial porn I can't interracial porn a guy, black guy white girl I can't watch it what I don't know it just For, I, that's something deep that you need to I can't talk watch to it. your therapist I can't watch about it. I mean by the way by the way I can't. I'm what not, about watching porn of a Pakistani man and a Swiss woman, which is what made me, Bert? Uh, hold on. Actually, I can't watch Pakistani uh, man, woman. Fuck yes, dude. That so like that was okay. So you don't like? It, but, oh, that's so, I've seen. I've seen a lot of Middle Eastern women, Pakistani women. But uh, you like to see them together. Indian women. Indian women. No, it's, you said I don't mind. I don't mind. I don't mind. I don't mind. Two you, black is, people together. Or no, two I don't. I won't. Uh, by the way, I hope everyone realizes this is a safe space. I this don't is watch. a safe space. I mean, it's fine, but like it, it I can't, is. I'm it telling does, you what I'm turned on to. I, yeah, can't, yeah, yeah. I can't fix that. It does speak to something deep, though. And we don't all have to be attracted to every single different race and every single different. I can't watch uh, Asian guy, Asian girl. I can watch white guy, Asian girl. 
Oh uh, Asian guys, and when they have sex, the noises they make creep me out. Like okay. I'm just. By the way, okay. this, is, this is just like your research. Yeah, this is just me. I'm just. By the way, and I'm sorry if I'm offending anyone, but I'm just telling real, real talk right now. Yeah. This yeah. is secrets. Okay. But secret the, de- time. the deeper thing of like interracial is. I can't watch. I can't watch Black and Black. But are you because are you like um, also affiliating different because when you say Asian guys are having sex in the, with this weird noise like are you maybe watching like hacky interracial porn where it's like like the there's like archetypes that are that are like stereotypes of of different races well, I don't because think- like could you could you imagine like just like a really like hot cool. Drake you know like having sex with like a hot cool young woman like that wouldn't no, turn no, no. you off would it no 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 I, I I like that for me Drake is just the pinnacle of everything sex and he's there's actually only, not there's, <laughs> only, there's only one uh, interracial porn I used to like watching mm-hmm. uh, it's this black guy I forget his name if you google him he uh he used to uh he used to he has a massive dick massive. okay <laughs> okay and, and uh, so completely against stereotype <laughs> yeah and and he used to make the girls talk to their dads while he fucked them and say tell him you're sucking this n-words dick oh tell me yeah, yeah. Tell well social dynamic I, you know what porn i like I, because you're you're turned on in that situation i wasn't even of turned like, on of, i was fascinated fast exactly so what turns me on is is different than i've i think i've seen so much porn what turns me on is something different. Social justice. Yes, yeah, social justice. <laughs> You're actually a social justice warrior when it comes to porn. I love watching two men, and I like the theme of like a guy that doesn't think he's gay uh, realizing he's gay. You know, like I, you know, like Bing Bong. The movers are here. Hey, what's up? Yeah, the boxes are over there. But before you get to them, drop your pants. What? Drop your fucking pants. He gets his dick sucked. Oh boy, does he love it! And then it's just like fun sex. I wish I could watch that. You should watch I that. Can't, you, I can't. You know why? I can't. I can't. I, I'll tell why you why. You? So I'm afraid my dick would be like, oh shit, that's my jam. It, and but then it's it would fine. But Bert, I'd have to change my wardrobe. I'd have to change my wardrobe. Bert, I would get you cufflinks. I. Uh, to I've me, seen gay, uh, because, I saw gay, but but Bert, I watch that and I'm not like, uh oh, I'm gonna leave my wife for a gay man. No, you no, know? I'm not afraid the thing, I'd leave to leave my me, wife. To me, what is so sexy about it yeah. is the um, the like dropping of of like gender and sexuality roles and assumptions. I also love. I think when two men are having sex in porn yeah. there's there's nothing that bumps for me like when i watch women have sex in porn i'm always thinking like are they treated right and like Ooh. they and generally it doesn't seem like they are no. even when it's two women it's like these girls have the longest nails their pussies would be cut up if they were real lesbians <laughs> like this doesn't feel real with two men girl girl two anymore. men having sex on camera i i can often find a lot of uh real realness it's like what you know when i watch someone on stage i want to see people talking about things that i i feel they're really connected to i'm okay i'm i'm in on that i'm in on realness i saw i saw gay porn it's fine if you get hard from two men having i mean like it's not by the way hold on why is it not i know that you're saying that but i'm telling you what i would i'm guessing and i'm stereotyping around but probably 90 percent of the people the guys listening right now are going yeah that's not fine that's not fine well but that's but but maybe that's part of like what's changing in society that'll make everyone a little bit better is that you can realize that being uh, being into something doesn't mean that that is your be all and end all and we're all so much more complicated than that and like so what like if you've kissed a guy great if you've gotten blown by a guy or blown a guy great it doesn't mean that you're gonna be or you, you should be labeled gay and every you need to come out it's like no everybody can do whatever the fuck they want and by the way i think it's also fine if if people are like 50 50 like in the middle and they've chosen to appease their families or to appease because it's always something that they've envisioned to be with a woman and never try anything with a man that's fine man that's that's what i mean like go with what makes you comfortable but but we can all acknowledge that we're more complicated than society would make us believe in whenever I grew up in the, you know, the nineties or whatever. It's like, I think, I think that's, I think I wish I used to have a joke about, uh, guys clicking on the thumb. The the joke was, uh, I saw gay porn once for like 45 minutes. It do (laughs) me. I'll tell you the story for real. I was torn with Jay Moore. Yeah. He walked into my room 
and he bought a gay porn and he this is by the way this is like not this is like 2002 and he starts laughing and he goes that's going to come up on your bill and we both start laughing and it plays yeah and then we're like and the first thing that happens is the guy fucks the other guy but he does it the one guy's laying on the guy's belly yeah and it's like belly to back yeah and we had and i think neither of us had ever assumed that, that you could spoon fuck a dude and it, both of us were like caught off guard yeah and then we're watching and we're not talking eating popcorn <laughs> and then and then the guy starts blowing the other guy and and both of us are like holy fuck and we're now it's like like we're involuntarily we're like we're swallowing on like just going like like you know like like yeah. just involuntarily and then he's like he's like i gotta turn this off i was like i gotta turn it off too but i think there and the joke i used to make was guys uh ladies you gotta step up your blowjob game you're still playing jv basketball and the gay guys are the harlem globetrotters but like you watch a gay guy blow a dude and it's like he's brushing his teeth with it he's fucking putting in work yeah there's i think that men just in general um are uh maybe from like what what we expect from gender or whatever men are much more able to go animalistic yeah. or like it's um i yeah i think it's so interesting that you were like i don't want to watch it for that reason i just cuz i don't i don't think that it like defines that, that like what we can find lots of different things sexy and they aren't necessarily yeah, but there's, for also, us. there's also people who don't want to drink in the mornings you know, there's people who are like, I would never drink in the morning. Yeah, exactly. That's a great, that's and a I great like example. And I like drinking in the mornings. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's my favorite time to drink. Yeah. It's like, uh, early morning flight. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, what was the first thing that I said when I came to your house? Yeah, are you drinking? <laughs> <laughs> But I think it's like part of your brand. I was like, I'm going to yeah. go to Burt's. So there's going to be like a fountain of oh, Tito's. I wish <laughs> the, um, but it's, it's interesting. You say that. I don't know why. I remember hearing, uh, Louis CK say he's not attracted to black women. And Patrice O'Neill said, then you're gay. And he goes, what? And he goes, if you're not attracted to black women, you must be gay. And Louis's like, no, I'm just not attracted to black women. And he goes, no, that's, that means you're gay. And the, I do think that there are like, there's, I'm attracted to black women. Yeah. But not, but for some reason, black guys fuck differently than what I'm looking for. Maybe is that it? Like, I don't sure. know. Sure. And also, like, not everybody just doesn't have to be into everything. Like, yeah. while I'm saying, like, watch gay porn, I'm just saying it because it's like, that's my favorite. Try this ice cream. You know, yeah. it's like, it's you not, watch porn. it's not in a way of like, the best ice cream is cookie dough, even though the best ice cream is cookie dough flavored ice cream. You pistachio, know, it's like, pistachio is pistachio. A sleeper. But like, try different flavors. It's so fun. I love that pistachio is probably something that showed up in the 20s. And everyone's like, what is this? And it's still around. It is still around. And my, and it's like very brown people too. I grew up eating rose rose pocket, pet, uh, what about rose petal rose petal pistachio rose? mango yeah. so wait wait so your dad is muslim my dad is pakistani and and muslim his whole family is very muslim my dad's pretty like anarchist like fuck god like really? not well he's just like my my parents married each other in the 70s which they were the original That's lesbians you know of. like they were the people that you would look at at the mall being like why are they holding hands like um and i think from that experience that's what sort of formed my uh ideology or or philosophy of just like th these compartments that we put ourselves in are bullshit you can't pick who you, fall you know in love with. you can't pick who you fall in love with neither sh nor should you yeah. and religion um and and culture it's all a great history and and like pistachios taste amazing and mangoes and like uh eid is like this fun holiday christmas is fun and all of this there's really amazing and, and and obviously there's beautiful things that come from religion but when you take any religion in this fundamental way or you take it to the extreme just like you take uh any of your tribes if i took being gay to this extreme where i only hung out with gay people what a sad limited life that that is and i think religion has the 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 danger of making people feel like they need to stay in these different lanes and camps. And growing up, I, I got to be around Islam and I feel very much like my view of Islam is it's just like any other religion. Like I have so many aunts and uncles. Some of them are great. Some of them, meh. and it's the same as like my, my wife's family is Catholic. They go to church every Sunday. My family goes to mosque. It's very like pedestrian, religion the thing that i don't like about religion is that certain people in uh within the community would view my mom as less than because she didn't convert to islam whereas it's like 
I mean, my mom is sort of like a binding force in our family and in my dad's family. My, my father's the eldest of eight and all of them immigrated to North America, first stop our basement and then spread out. So I grew up with this, like this, like very rich culture, but also this like awareness that, um, it doesn't really matter what church or mosque or whether you go to one. It just matters cool if you're like a good person. Everyone showed up and stayed in your dad's basement. <laughs> yeah. Like I think your parents' basement. That's, yes. That's so, my, my, we had the same experience. My mom's the second oldest and we lived in Florida. Her family's from Philadelphia and they would all come down to Florida and to start their lives. They'd get out of college and move down to Florida and stay with us. And so we had almost all of my nine uncles at one point lived with us. And it was a really cool experience to get it is, to know and, my and it probably formed this thing that we have in common, which is that thing that we were talking about of like, of like not being able to be like Dulce, like get away from me. It's like, yeah. no, come on in, stay in my basement. What yeah. are you, a weirdo that's figuring something out? Okay, sit in my basement. Now, you how, know? Many, how many brothers and sisters do you have? I have just one older brother. That's Sanir. so funny. Your dad was had nine and he just picked two. Yeah. I mean, probably, well, in Pakistan, that's what you did. You know, you had like so many kids. The uh, the new Mission Impossible Pakistan is... Uh, is that happening for real? one of the places. They, I think that's where everything goes down. Oh, I thought Pakistan. it was called Mission Impossible Pakistan. I was going to call <laughs> all my cousins. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm flying to Toronto. I did a speech that I have to have the video on in ninth grade about Pakistan. And uh, it is the funniest thing I've ever done because I did, I did not do the research. And so I'm in ninth grade and I'd give a five minute speech about a place I have know nothing about. And at the time, nu- Russia was trying to give them nuclear arms. This is back really? this is during the Cold War. Wow. And so, and, uh, and all I knew how to do was pronounce it properly. And that was Pakist- Pakistan. Uh, Pakistan. Tan, tan. That's yeah. where you get and I And so that was ta, all ta, I, ta. I spent a ton of time in the speech pronouncing it. And your it. teacher was like, he's got to be right. I you mean. could get, it was 60%. Uh, presentation, 40% information, and I got a 60 <laughs> for just pres- yeah. I mean, that's got to be an American uh, way of grading. 60% yeah, oh, yeah. presentation, 40% information. All boys Catholic high school. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I wish I had that speech. I had beautiful hair back then. Oh, I How anything. long was it? Oh, it was, uh, I was in my surfing phase. Oh, my so God, So it was kid. like down to here. It was like swooped. And then shaved on the sides and in the back. And it was light because I was surfing all the time. Oh, my God. But the biggest fucking head, the weirdest lips, (laughs) the biggest nose. I just look like a fucking imbecile. Um, You've got to post it as a TBT. I want to see this I bet I could find that video and post it online. Of the Pakistan presentation? Yeah. Yeah. I'll put it in my story. I have all those speeches. I should post all my speeches. I was going to go get into debate because Sam Salario used to drive me to school. By the way, I don't, I'm not, I don't think Sam. <laughs> Do you have a problem? What's happening with Sam Salario? You said his name. I, I've been listening, I've been listening to, he introduced me to Susan and the Banshees, the Smiths, oh, the Cure. Oh, who's that? Sam, Saler, Sam Salario. I don't he was, know. He was my, he was my, my senior big brother. So when we were freshmen, we got big brothers and you got, was big, he famous though? No, no, no. <laughs> but you said, you realized you said his name twice. As if it's like <laughs> Sam Salario. You read my biography. You he were was, with me my whole life. He was awesome. You were the Puerto Rican hand in my pocket. <laughs> he was, he was, he was, he lived, you got a big brother based on the pro, on proximity so they could drive you to school technically. And so Sam Salario lived in Lutz. Kristen Salario is his sister. And I knew Kristen very well. And because uh, she was rough, more closer to my age, uh-huh. but Sam picked me up the first time, and he's like, "What kind of music do you like?" And I was like, "He was very like he was alt before anyone was alt." And I was like, "And my I really liked reggae and hip hop, and yeah. I didn't. I was always afraid to tell people that." And I was like, "Just about everything." He's like, "You like the Cure or you like the Smiths?" And I was like, "I guess." And he played uh, "Girlfriend in a Coma," and I went. I was like, I, I, I didn't get it at first. And then every day he would play it and I started loving this music. Every day he drove me to school. And then next thing you know, I'm wearing trench coats. I'm fucking listening to Smith. So that's what you're worried about with gay porn is that you, you <laughs> I like play it for you, drive you to a couple clubs and then pretty soon. <laughs> the joke I had in my special is I'm not homophobic. I'm a homochondriac. Like, I don't care if you're gay. I was afraid one night you get me drunk and trick me into it and I'll like it. <laughs> All right. It's, that's queer enough to get a pass. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you think of what did you think of uh Nanette? I loved it. I thought I, it was, I, I, I thought for me it was like so cool to see her uh not only like um break the format but use everything. You know, like it's like it's like the kind of cooking where like you use every part of 
the pig you know Mm -hmm. like she has a history degree and weaves that in she did jokes that she's not proud of for 10 years weaved that in she it's it makes you laugh and cry and to me the hysteria around something it's just so funny something different becomes a hit and the way that people panic of like is this what comedy's become is this well did, now does everyone have to do that does Comedy's everyone dead. have to talk about being you know raped to, to have a successful uh, and it's like bitch <laughs> chris rock still exists yeah okay we don't we don't all have to do this but it is an inspiration and guess what it's giving voice to a kind of person that has never been celebrated yeah it's it i you know, Bobby Kelly, I, I talked to Tim Dillon the other day, and Bobby Kelly said that, what time do you need to get out of here? Um, probably in like 15. If okay, all right, cool. Um, Bobby Kelly said the most brilliant thing ever, and I said it in, a, in one of my meetings yesterday, and they brought up Nanette, yeah. and, uh, and I said, Bobby Kelly said the most brilliant thing. Bobby Kelly said, you got to remember, she thought this was her last special ever. Like, she was quitting comedy. What would you say in your last spe- – like, if you had one special and then you're done the career, what would you say? And I went, whoa, that got deep. And then I thought, yeah. what would I say? What yeah. what What is – what do I – and then why am I not saying that in these specials? Why am I just – that was – and it was like yeah. really put some weight into it. And I went, yeah, what is my purpose on this planet? And what am yeah. I sharing – Obviously, I think I will always lean more to giggles because I love giggles. Like, I love giggling. Mm-hmm. But, like, what it, uh, that was really heavy to me. And, I, and what, what broke me nuts. Well, what, s- constantly, we're, we're constantly sort of balancing. We're towing the line between, like, saying the things that we want to say and also understanding that we've got to get to a laugh. Yeah. That's why a podcast is beautiful because there's not too much. Like, here we are sitting on this couch. We've had, like, all these conversations Sometimes there's been laughter, but mostly we've just been talking genuinely. Yeah. I find myself, the the deeper I get into comedy, realizing that that genuine shit is much more important than the, than the setup punch. If you look at it, like you probably never had got, had to do radio. But I, I mean, I like meaning. Had I've done, to do yeah, it. I've done radio, but like, yeah, no, that like jarring sort of <laughs> sound effects. Like I remember having to do that and then having to do bits like, like, They'd be like, so, t- so I understand you fought a bear, and then you'd go like, uh, when I yes. was twenty, like, yeah. and then I remember doing, I remember doing the podcast that changed it all for me. I remember doing Rogan for the first time, uh-huh. and I walked in, and I had done so much radio that I walked in, uh, we got high, and I was like, I got a couple bits I'll do, and I started doing a bit, and he went, What are you like, doing? He was like, Huh? Yeah. And I was like, What? And he was like, Wait seriously like like not not yeah. not calling me on it but going like like you'd say like things that people would glaze over in a bit like uh when i was 22 i got involved with the russian mafia here's how it happened he goes what do you mean no, wait hold on yeah when, how did that happen and then and then and then randomly the one bit that i'm known for was simply a conversation with him uh-huh. that then turned into a bit and i was wow. like and it fuck dude that and then I was like, oh, I'm into podcasting. I remember listening to Joey Diaz at the very early stages of the Rogan thing uh-huh. and being like, this guy's fucking amazing. And if it was like, but you're right. This format is more, I think, where the conversation is going on stage with an audience and a performer of like, it doesn't need to be fucking set a point, set a point, set. And there's yes. a place for that. But I love. And it's fine if that, I mean, look, you will always, there's always a market for, I, I just, watched, just watched a clip of Seinfeld's Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee and he's a comedy god, a legend. Yeah. And, but there was, the clip that I watched was like, no one cares about your real life, you know, make something up. And it's like, well, it's, it just does you don't have, it doesn't have to make you feel all sorts of ways that people are being successful doing something in a different way. I actually in Montreal was hanging out a, a bunch with like the young cuties at Netflix and they were getting a lot of flack for Nanette from a lot of like white dudes that were like, oh. you know, well, so white guys are supposed to be ashamed of themselves now, you know? And it's like, just instead of having this embarrassing conversation with the industry why don't you just mine the way that you feel about this because there's something really great in the way that you feel about this or or how about how about listen to your own advice and by the way and i say this across the board there's so many white guys myself included in this it never feels great to be like white guys because we're all because of the fact that we're all different and all the same yeah it will yeah but it, it is i get it white guys have always said bro 
if you're offended, turn it off. Exactly. And then all of a sudden when the net came out, they wouldn't turn it off and they wanted to complain just like all the complaints they've been getting at their shows. Yes. And I said, take your own advice. Just turn it off. It's not for you yes. then. Like, if exactly. it, like, watch it. Like, you can have opinions. Just share them with your friends and be yeah. like, I don't know. But like, but like, I definitely, I definitely shared it with my friends. Me and my friends talked about it a lot. And, and, yeah. But we talked about it. We didn't fucking slam her. But what we talked were, about what it. What they were saying was they see comedy, they see stand-up comedy as a whole genre, a whole uh, format with lots of different genres. So the way, the genre of this like deep sort of real and and like takes twists and turns uh, stand up, Nanette kind of invents that. Nanette is now the beginning of you can do that. Yeah, you know, I think and that's and, great. Well, and I, I would argue and the way Rogan does comedy, or the way Chris Rock does comedy, or, Burr. or the way Schumer, or whoever it is, it's like there are different ways of doing comedy, and there's space for all of it. We've never we've I, lived in a, we've never lived in a time where there's like more space. I got to give a shout out to what's her name because like two weeks before Nanette came out, uh, I'm fucking her name up on purpose right now. Amanda Could, sings no. Carmen Electra, Cameron Esposito. Esposito, Cameron Esposito. I was Carmen thinking Electra. Electra. <laughs> Cameron Esposito. Her special came out on for free. Yes. And all the proceeds went to a rape foundation. And I thought I watched that and I thought that was great and it was very different and I liked it. You don't, it doesn't, you can like other shit. Yeah. It doesn't have, have to, to be the exact same. It, it kind may not of be comedy. your favorite thing. Like I love Bill Burr. I love when he takes a subject that I expect me to disagree with what he's saying and, and he then, convinces me I'm wrong. Yeah. He does that all the time. I love it. Yeah. I love Rogan. I love his energy. I love the way he fucking will f find something that I like where I go, God damn it, where I was right there. And the yes. fucking Segura. I love I love all my friends. I love people that are not friends with. I love And you know what? Here, here's the thing is like the people that you also see yourself in, you're always gonna relate to more. I want Nanette's I there and, and there's millions more like me that want an Annette that I want a Lisa Traeger I want a Mae Martin <laughs> these are also happen to be my best friends um, but like it's fair for all of us to want to see ourselves in our heroes and feel connected and and like we could be friends with all these people and uh, yeah I, I'm There's, glad that you fine. feel I'm glad that you feel that way I'm glad that Bobby Kelly feels that way and it's just, everyone does I mean, we all I mean I, there's you know, not I one comic worth his weight and salt who didn't watch it and go I wow. think like I think what people got most offended with was the idea that I don't I don't think she said this but I think people were saying things that she wasn't saying like comedy's now dead she killed comedy and well, she's not you know, I don't think as she's a, saying as a stand up that. comic I think like her take on what it is to be a comedian is based on, I, I, I bristled a little bit because I'm like, well, I don't feel like when I'm making jokes about myself that I'm like, that that, that is like this toxic relationship it's that I have with connect. myself. But she being from Tasmania where she talked details like <laughs> that it was, it was like uh, illegal to be gay. It's worse than Alabama, I guess. Yeah, it was fucking <laughs> illegal to be gay. So her, she's speaking from her Sorry, experience. Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> is Alabama out there? No. <laughs> Hello, Alabama. <laughs> But yeah, I thought it was fucking, I thought it was fantastic. It was really I, yeah. deep and cool and fun and uh, yeah. But can everybody watch my special too? It's oh, only yeah. 15 it's minutes. It's fant absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's on the comedy lineup on Netflix. It's episode six. It's you, Sam J. Sam J, Michelle uh, Buteau. Yep. Uh, uh, but Tim Dillon. Tim Dillon. It's fantastic. It really is fantastic. I recorded it like a week after my son was born, so I've got like new baby glow. Oh. I, <laughs> I didn't birth the baby. <laughs> I've had the new baby glow of being like a daddy that went on a business trip a week after the baby was born. Oh, and I just, remember those uh, days. <laughs> yeah, collecting high fives for it. And it was so fun. And there was parts of the special that I like didn't... Um, remember like i did like there was things isn't that fun to like record something and be like oh i like left little easter egg surprises for myself i told a joke about uh having daughters and taking them to the zoo on my on that special comfortably dumb that had happened that two days before i was that. listening to that special yesterday uh, and and the joke was my daughters took out a blind guy like my daughters ran knocked over a blind guy and then at my point was like why would a blind guy go to a zoo that's got to be really sad the noise is like help and the smells but luckily i'd seen ray ray the 
Ray about for the blind guy, the piano he player. Wrote Ray Charles, yeah. Ray Charles movie, and so I knew what to do. I was like, no, he gets up on his own. I, by the way, I'm so embarrassed. With the joke <laughs> right it's there. like a hyper real. It's so funny when someone said, I, I don't know how this got set up, but I think my manager or someone, they were like, they're like, hey, would you have Sabrina on your podcast? I was like, oh my God, I'm in love with Sabrina. And yes. they're like, wait, what? And I went, I, no, I love her. Like we, when we hung out in Vegas, we definitely connected. Totally. And I was like, I was like, I love her. I love my her. My wife loves you too. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. And I'm, and I'm following you on Instagram stories. I've been following you since then. And so I've watched everything. And so I'm like, oh my God, like in, I, I think I even said to my manager, I was thinking like maybe we'll do it on a Saturday and they could bring the baby over oh, and they could go swimming. We should just and, do that. Yeah, but I would love to have you guys when we have a barbecue because I invite people like uh, like Joey Diaz comes over every time. Awesome. And his daughter is fucking hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> um, but we'll have like a barbecue over here and have the families over. My daughters are like, will be all over Wolfie. Awesome. 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 I was listening to that special because I was getting jazzed about coming here comfortably dumb that's so cute. You got the set list there. That was my set list and my lucky eyelashes. I, you know what I liked? Your lucky eyelash. Um, I I was listening to it and it was playing like it was like shuffling. I think it's the intro to the special where you're like, "Hey, I'm Bert," and if you want to listen to this special, and but you're one part of it was like, so if you're with your girl, like go to the kitchen, get a couple beers and like listen to the special, oh watch God, the special. I did do that. It is, but to me, I was thinking about it as I was driving. I was like, I mean, how, when did you record that? Uh, God damn it. I don't know. When I was 33, 34 years ago, years ago, probably, years, probably 10 years ago, 11 years ago, 11 years ago. And it's like, you you were like talking to the audience like it was a podcast i was like this is like his nanette <laughs> was like talking to like like before oh the special starts being like hey what's up and then also being I like re- guy go get your girl a couple of beers it's like it was it was oh for like God. but if you think about it being 10 years ago it's like that was like ahead of its time you were you know yeah it's like it keeps evolving like what we do with these things it uh, oh are you fear uh, oh yeah that, that um I yeah, no, fuck. That's crazy. I haven't thought about that special in forever. And when you say that, I remember recording that. I remember, hey <laughs> yeah. guys, it's Bert Kreischer. Yeah. Listen, if you're married, you're gonna love. It was this like special. the precursor to your podcast. Good God. Well, I appreciate you doing this, and your fucking your Netflix set was fucking amazing. Thank you so and much. I'm so happy for you. And if you don't follow her on Instagram, it's S A B R I N A J. A L E E S. Yes. I really do follow you. I can spell Amanda Seals too. <laughs> I'm giving Amanda Seals so much shout outs. <laughs> I mean, I represent her, so I'm happy. <laughs> I win both ways. Um, I love you. Thank you so I much love for you. doing Thank this. Thank you so much for having me.